So I've stated this before, and it was relatively controversial, but I'm going to say it again. I'm going to double down because I think it is factually correct. When Rush Limbaugh died, his ghost possessed Joe Rogan, <laughs> and Joe Rogan has functionally turned into a right-wing hack. He does as much propaganda as right-wing anti-SJW YouTubers. He repeats all of the talking points that we hear on Fox News. So at this point, he's just... A conservative. He's a multimillionaire, so of course he's going to vote with the party who most fights for the interest of his class. Except he's going to push back against critics like myself who claim that he's a conservative, and he's going to tell us that he's actually really liberal. Now, when he's going to try to explain what makes him liberal, he's going to run into some issues because all he could talk about are the conservative positions that he holds. Take a look. Today, the left has gone so fucking far left so radical that the right are the ones that are celebrating comedians and celebrating Chappelle. And yeah, they had my back through all the crazy shit that happened mm -hmm. with me. It was Fox News that fucking had my back. Would it's, you ever think that they would be the ones to cape for you, like, you know, 10 years ago? I'm so liberal. Yeah. Like, I talk I about it all the time. Like, I, I say I am not a conservative. I'm not conservative. But I am pro-Second Amendment. Uh -huh. And I am a hunter. And I am a cage-fighting commentator. And I, you know, and I drink and I smoke cigars and I like to bow hunt. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot in there that's like, hey. Crossover. Yeah. But it's just being a human. But I'm a compassionate person, and I believe that there's a oh boy. I'll tell you what, though. One thing that happened during this pandemic was I, I open it opened my eyes about human nature. Like I used to be very pro universal basic income. My thought was, wouldn't it be great if you just had enough money so you could eat and you could pay your rent, and then you could pursue what you wanted to. But the reality of human nature came fully into focus when I realized that one when some people got all that money from the government the COVID money and then they got unemployment uh -huh. they didn't want to work I have a friend who has a restaurant he, he could not get people to come back to work yeah and so, one one buddy of mine uh, he a bartender told him I can come back to work but I can only work for 20 hours a week because that way I get unemployment so he wouldn't work more than 20 hours a week so he could get free money mm -hmm. so he could, could have made more money but he didn't want to because he didn't want to work so he was getting that free money and then my friend was like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Like, okay. Like, and now he's, you know, he's always short-staffed, and it's a, it's a mess. Yeah. Like, you see a lot of people that, are, are, that own businesses that have a hard time finding people work for them. So there's, there's pros to that, right? The pros are people, uh, it's, it's a marketplace that favors the worker, so workers can ask for more money. So you're seeing a lot of places like bars and restaurants and stuff that have to pay more money per hour, which I guess is good as long as the restaurant can stay open. Notice how he didn't cite a single policy that makes him liberal? Very interesting. Now, the first thing that he said was so stupid, it almost made my head explode. The left has gone so fucking far left, so radical that the right are the ones celebrating comedians and celebrating Chappelle. Now, first of all, whenever somebody points out that the left has gone too extreme, notice that that person is completely brainwashed. Whoever says this, they're brainwashed, right? Because... We're in a situation where the right, half of that party, half of Republicans are quite literally against democracy. They're plotting and scheming ways that they can send rogue, rogue electors to the Electoral College to overturn future elections. They're currently trying to find ways to gerrymander and do voter suppression so they remain in power in perpetuity. Studies have shown that the Republican Party has shifted to the right. We have a Democratic Party that's comparable to conservative parties in Canada and the UK. So to say that the left has gotten too extreme, it just proves that you're brainwashed. You've been watching too much Fox News, too much right-wing propaganda. And of course, we know that Joe Rogan probably has. But, you know, he talks about comedy, and that's the reason why. That's evidence to him as to why we've gone too far to the left, uh, because... Uh, the right is the one celebrating comedians. Um, I'm sorry, but whether or not you like a particular comedian says nothing about your political ideology. And just because we don't like the transphobic jokes of Dave Chappelle or Ricky Gervais, that doesn't mean that we're against comedy. We just don't like your dumb transphobic jokes. I mean, uh, before, I remember this video where Joe Rogan was uh, calling out Carlos Mencia on stage because he stole a joke from Bill Cosby. But now... These uh, comedians that Joe Rogan claims we don't celebrate are just stealing jokes from each other left and right. I mean, how many times have you heard the same variation of the, uh, well, if trans people can be trans, can I identify as an attack hel helicopter joke? I mean, on uh, Dave Chappelle's special, he literally said, 
oh, well, if a man can be a woman, can I be Chinese? Like, that's actually something that he said. So you all just have the same fucking jokes. You repeat it. And then you claim that we're triggered because we're not laughing. No, your jokes are stupid. You're punching down and your material is shit. You know, as comedians uh, get older, as they grow more wealthy, they just become naturally out of touch. And sometimes they have to recalibrate and talk to people so they understand what the normal folk, what the peasants are thinking. But because we're not laughing doesn't mean that we're against comedy. There are plenty of comedians who I love. I love George Carlin. I like Bo Burnham. I like comedy. I just watched uh, David Cross's stand-up special, and it's incredible. So it's not that we're against comedy. We're against dumb boomer comedy, okay? Now, he says, I'm so liberal. Like, I talk about it all the time. And then he goes on to state some areas that makes him um, conservative. For example, he loves gun culture, and um, he's a cage-fighting commentator. Again, I don't know what that has to do with political ideology, but if you're this uninformed about politics and ideology in general, I feel like maybe you shouldn't be commenting on politics as much as you do, but he's obsessed with it because I'm sure he's watching like Fox News or I don't know what the fuck he's watching, but I mean, you you have the same talking points as the right, so clearly you're getting it from somewhere, perhaps Facebook, I don't know. But I mean, because you like cage fighting like i wouldn't necessarily deduce oh that's a that's a right winger but that's the exception you know he's mostly liberal but you know he's a conservative in a couple of areas he likes gun culture and he likes to talk about cage fighting i don't give a fuck what you talk about cage fighting boxing i, I don't give a shit okay that means nothing with regard to your political ideology he's such a fucking dipshit um now my favorite part is he gets to this point where he is seemingly going to explain why he is a liberal he says but i'm a compassionate person and i believe that and then he interrupts himself and says oh boy i'll tell you what though and then what does he do he goes on to attack workers using right-wing talking points so the point where he was going to validate his argument he interrupts himself to explain how conservative he is and then he talks about his uh his friend and how his friend who owns a restaurant, is this the CEO of McDonald's? Who are we talking about here? Because this is a very rich person. But anyways, his friend who owns a restaurant, uh, that led to him basically being against universal basic income because his friend who owns the restaurant had a worker who didn't want to work because they didn't want to lose their unemployment insurance. So because of that anecdote, Joe Rogan is saying, generally speaking, if you give people money just for free, they're not going to want to work. Except that is verifiably untrue because states who thought that same thing, well, they cut out those unemployment insurance benefits earlier than other states. And what happened? They didn't see growth in the job market. As Axios reported in September of 2021, states that ended federal unemployment benefits earlier this summer saw August job growth at less than half the rate of states that retained the benefits, according to new data released Friday by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Leaders in the largely Republican-led states had insisted that the benefits were discouraging people from work and ended the assistance program early ahead of its planned expiration on September 6th. Economists analyzing the unemployment issue have seen little evidence that cutting off the benefits has provided a clear boost to local labor markets in part because of difficulty separating the influence of the payments from larger shifts in the labor force or of the potentially offsetting damage done by the pandemic, Reuters writes. So Joe Rogan did a 180 on a massive policy like universal basic income based on one anecdote that does not denote general applicability. Giving people money for free by the government doesn't make them less likely to work. In fact, if you had a universal basic income type program, people wouldn't just stay home. They'd realize, okay, I have more bargaining power in the labor market so I can get a job that I like and not just settle for one where I'm treated like shit. Uh, also, I have more room. So perhaps, you know, I can work a job and have even more extra money, put away some money, you know, uh, for a rainy day. But, you know, Joe Rogan doesn't realize this. One thing that is incredible about the pandemic that Joe Rogan doesn't realize, he thinks that the takeaway is that people are just lazy, but the takeaway is that workers for the first time in our generation are standing up and acknowledging that they actually do have leverage over their employers. And so if Joe Rogan's restaurant owning friend wants workers, if he wants to make a living off of that restaurant, he has to acknowledge that the people who he hires also want to make a living. They don't want to work full time for you if they 
also can't support themselves. And at this point in time, workers have the ability to go to a different employer who offers a more competitive wage. And if you can't afford to pay that, then I'm sorry, Joe Rogan's friend, you can't afford to hire another worker. And the difference between getting money from the government through a universal basic income program and getting money through an employer is that there's stability that is inherent with a government check. So if you're getting that $300 a week in unemployment insurance or $1,000 a month through universal basic income, it's always going to be there at the first of the month, whenever the date is designated, assuming we ever get this policy, which we won't, but you know, it's always going to be there. You can count on it showing up in your bank account on the day when it always does. But with your employer, there's no stability there. You're in this abusive relationship with the power imbalance where your employer can at any time pull the rug out from under you and cut your hours like that. But Joe Rogan is a multimillionaire, so stability isn't even something that he can comprehend at this point. When you have millions and millions of dollars and your work, your job is just talking, then it's easy to get a little bit out of touch and call everyone else lazy. But I'm assuming that Joe Rogan wouldn't want to work for what? $12 an hour at a restaurant and deal with Karens during a pandemic where you're required by state law to tell them to put on a mask, but yet they're screaming at you and they're calling you uh, fucking a Soros shill. Joe Rogan wouldn't want to subject himself to that, but yet he expects everyone else to do these shitty jobs that are required to keep society running. No, you do the job, Joe Rogan. You're going to complain about workers being lazy. You go fucking get a job. If you're worried about your restaurant owner's uh, staff shortages, go fucking work. Why are you too good to work? right? Why are you too good to do these things that you expect other people to do? It's because he's comfortable and doesn't care. He's totally detached from the experience of normal people. So now he could just bark at the peasants when they don't get in line. And he thinks that that's going to resonate with people and thinks that it's going to prove that he's liberal. Of course not. Joe Rogan is out of touch. Joe Rogan is a conservative and he refuses to admit it because uh, I don't know. He's, I, I think mostly just kind of been either apolitical or liberal leaning but at this point in time for all intents and purposes you are a conservative and you know just saying that you're a liberal isn't going to make people think that you're a liberal because what you're saying substantively is deeply deeply conservative and it is propaganda at the behest of the right were you acting like a